Hey everyone, just doing this video today to revisit a topic that I have been delving into since I posted about it back, I think in like late winter, early spring. Um, and the post was titled, Can You Appropriate Your Own Ancestral Culture? Which triggered a lot of conversations and some uncomfortable um things in myself and others and I've been continuing to lean into this question since then and will continue to do so so of course um, this is an ongoing discussion process that um, I'm sure will shift and change. I recently watched a video by Dr. Angela Puka about the um, academic definition of cultural appropriation. And her video was based on the work and a lecture given by Professor Sabina Magliocco at Harvard University. Both of these videos are free online. So um, it's important to learn the academic definition because the, the phrase cultural appropriation came out of academia. Um, Cultural appropriation was happening long before that. It's been happening for a long time. And this was just what came up to identify this sort of pattern of cultural behavior. Academic definitions can be rigid. So just so that we're um, aware of that, that, um, that they don't always fit into every situation. And this is part of the problem, I think, is that we have this idea of what a cultural appropriation is and it doesn't always fit in every situation unless it's extreme. So we have our extreme examples of cultural appropriation. And then we have a lot of them that are very situational and very nuanced. So, um, so just based on what I've learned so far, the idea of cultural appropriation is best understood if we understand culture and what culture is and isn't. So culture is not genetic. It's not race. It's not ethnicity. It does. It's you don't become part of a culture because your great 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 grandfather was part of a culture, um, and so that's hard, right? Um, when we're doing ancestral reclamation work, a lot of times there is the this longing to be a part of whatever our ancestors were a part of, and we we can be, but um, going through the right um, or the uh, most ethical. I don't like the word right. The most ethical um, map, um, pathways, um, the weavings into what our ancestral cultures were. So the reason why, uh, just because you had a great, 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 great ancestor in some culture, um, that you're not necessarily um, acculturated by that. And we'll talk about the word acculturation in a minute is because in culture is literally made um, as you go through life. Culture is just like, and this is one of the ways I like to understand it, our actual fermentation process that we call culturing, right? So like yogurt and sauerkraut. So it's like you have um, basically these bacteria um, and fungi and other living um, life forces that season you, right? So our cultures are living forces that we're seasoned by when we come in contact and converge with them. So learning about our ancestral cultures requires that. So in other words, it's not just like, oh, my great, great, great grandfather was from, say here, because I'm, um, I have Ital Italian ancestors, from Italy, it doesn't mean that I've had that process that my great, great, great grandfather had. Um, also, that was a different time. Culture's always changing. So, um, so I love that definition. For me, it really helps me to think about, oh, what have I been seasoned by? So for instance, some of us, our ancestors didn't also leave their culture, right? Um, they didn't leave their flora, their cultural flora at the border 
of a national, there's no national borders that stop culture, right? Culture also um, is very fluid. So for instance, my grandparents who were both Italian immigrants didn't leave their culture in Italy. They brought it here with them. And then um, they shared it with others who had come from different regions of Italy. And, um, and then they passed it on to some degree to, um, to myself. And so some of us, and it goes down through the generations. So um, also, um, culture is movable and transmissible outside of um, geographical location. That said, um, when you're in place, in a different place than where the original culture or flora um, emerged, it is also going to be influenced and changed because that's just the way creation works by other things that are going on in the ecosystem. Um, so we think about this in terms of what is known as acculturation and enculturation, um, which are two important definitions. So acculturation is really that process of um, bringing your flora, right? Your, your, the flora of where you were enculturated. So, so here's some definitions that I found online. Um, and this is just uh, a website called keydifferences.com. I don't, I don't know anything about this um, other than I just know those definitions and these seem to be um, a good encapsulation of them. Enculturation is the culture learning process in which an individual comes to know about the rules, values, and behavioral patterns of his or her own native culture. Conversely, acculturation refers to a process of cultural learning where the members of a particular cultural group get influenced by another culture by coming in contact with it and adopts it to some great extent. So those are two different processes. So I was enculturated um, American um, and Italian American, right? So those are different than if I had been enculturated in Italy, Italian. And this is really obvious when I go there or to either of my ancestral homelands, Ireland or Italy, where I um, can clearly see the difference in myself in how I've been seasoned as American. Um, so that doesn't mean I can't, I don't begin acculturating, which I do and we all do when we spend enough time in um, another place. We began to converge with the culture and learn its ways. So ancestral work, ancestral reclamation does not necessarily acculturate us to our culture, our ancestral culture. In terms of cultural pro appropriation, however, I think an important key to this definition is that in the academic definition that is, is that for cultural appropriation to be happening, there has to be some oppression going on. So appropriation happens when an oppressive culture or society or system um, takes, extracts the culture of the less dominant. So some place that they've colonized are invading or have some power over. So cultural appropriation really has to do with power. Um, that is different than decontextualizing, right? So one of the things that I think happens when we do ancestral work and we are not um, acculturating or learning about the culture, but we're just merely identifying with it or taking aspects of it out um, and fitting them to our own um, seasoning is that it's it's decontextualizing. So in that sense, it's like we're just, it's still extractive, but not necessarily cultural appropriation. Um, and probably not really the way that we want to go about learning about our ancestral cultures. That really does take time and seasoning and fermentation and 
change and transmutation um, and a lot of commitment and um, devotion to it. So um, I hope that is clear, as clear as could possibly be. And I'm sure I will be back at this. I will be continuing to work at my ideas around this. Um, and please, you know, um, take what you want and leave the rest because I know we're all working on this together and um, all have different experiences. Okay, bye for now.